David, and moving on to another David, but this time David Frank. Who is Time begins now. Hello. I'm here to talk to you about the silent salesman. Packaging. Now, when we go to the supermarket, we usually make a decision about what we're going to buy within three to five seconds, depending on which academic you look at. <laughs> Whatever it is, is certainly seconds. And a lot of these products are saying, pick me over the others, or pick me, even though you weren't going to buy anything like me, or buy more of me. And the first thing that we see when we look at an array of products at the supermarket is the colour and shape before any other cognition happens. Colour. Well, it's actually the colour saturation that has the most effect and curvature when it comes to shape. A good example is that we can affect the chances of you thinking that a juice is more fresh by increasing the colour saturation or by choosing the right colour, say, orange over white. Shape is another good example. So, perfume is an excellent industry which does a lot of innovation to do with both materials and shapes, both to convey premium as well as to stick out on the shelves. Wine, however, is a different sort of industry where we use these shapes and colours as category cues when looking for the right type of wine. Please don't ask me about wine. I'm a cyber person. Another good example is soap. Now, for some reason, we tend to gender a lot of beauty products and health products, even though there's absolutely no need. What gender do you think this is aimed at? This is, this is no scent, so it doesn't actually matter. And yet we have these shapes. Dove female will be the circular, circular shapes and the circular forms in the logo, whereas dove men <laughs> is, is not curved text. It's nice square shapes, and the bottles and the soaps themselves have angles where the female targeted ones don't. We also have other category cues. For example, in Norway and Germany, mayonnaise comes in metal tubes, not unlike toothpaste or, say, a topical cream. Uh, yesterday, I went to Farmland and they've got a cheese in a tube as well, and it's British. And yet, if you were going into Norway and you wanted to bring your mayo, you probably wouldn't want to use a typical British style plastic tub or bottle. Uh, we've also got the audio sense. So in 1958, a researcher called Brown found that the best material for using uh, wrapping for bread is cellophane because of that audio effect. However, these days, not a lot of research goes into that. Personally, my research is into the tactile properties of packaging, namely embossment. However, we can affect your perception of things like sweetness, pureness, refreshingness, freshness, and naturalness, as well as the general taste of something by the packaging that we put your products in. Thank you very much. So, I'd like to ask Bill's question now then, so direct your attention. Uh, so, if you had to make a wrapper for a feeling like, what, what would it look like? Look, I think we want something premium, so we're going to go for something clear, and the reflective properties as well uh, convey a sense of premium. And I do see a lot of glass around the canvas. Um, a lot of universities, especially higher end ones, do that. Um, however, Fang Lab's more of an experiential thing. Um, and especially the millennial generation are going for more experiential things in their designs, and as a result, marketers are, are changing. Uh, certainly, uh, I don't think we're, we're competing uh, very much in the, in the science communication industry in Edinburgh. I'm, uh, I was a committee member for Edinburgh Skeptics, and I organise events. Um, Around, I think Fame Labs, and, and it, it, it's all good. It's all good here. <laughs> it is Edinburgh. Um, there's so much science. It's the city that humanism and, and the, the enlightenment came from. Obviously, I'm not from here. I just really love this place. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, Stephen. <laughs>